Another Kiwi lost to wings by Matt Komsky. Narrator, read by Raymond. Pukeko, read by Lucy. Tui, read by Kevin. Puppy Farroa, read by Justin. Kiwi, read by Maya. Tane Hoka Hoka, read by Gemma. Tane Mahuta, the god of the forest, is very worried. His children, the giant trees of Aotearoa, are dying. He asks his brother, Tane Hokoka, the god of the sky, for help. Tane Hokoka invites all of the birds to a meeting. Why do you think we are all summer to this meeting, Kiwi? I don't know, Tui, but it must be important. Tane Hukahuka looks very vexed. It might be about the state of the trees. They seem to be getting thicker by the day. Pukiko, I don't like the way Tane Mahuta is watching us. You're right, Puffy Fadada. He's giving a strange look. Hey, Kiwi, pull those blind tail feathers away. You are drawing attention to us. It can't be that serious, Tui. Do stop flapping about and listen to Tane Hokoka. I want to hear what this is all about. Birds of the sky, a plague of insects is devouring the trees of the forest. One of you must come down here and live on the forest floor to eat the insects and save the trees. I'm asking for a volunteer. There is a very long silence. <laughs> He can't be serious. There's no way beautiful birds like us are going to give up living here in the sky. Doesn't he realize how dangerous it is down there in the dark on the forest floor? I reckon it's a bog down there among the tree roots. Even an endless supply of insects wouldn't convince me to volunteer to live down there. Besides, the mud would ro rot my feet if you had to walk around in it, wouldn't it? If none of us is prepared to live down there, then we'll all eventually have to lose our homes up here in the treetops. Someone has to make a sacrifice. We can't just ignore Tane Hoka Hoka and hope the problem goes away. Hey, keep quiet. You've drawn attention to us again. Eh, Tui, will you come down from the sky? How? Tiny Hoka Hoka. It's too dark down there and I'm afraid of dark. There is another long, very long silence. Then Tiny Hoka Hoka turns to Pukiko. Pukiko, will you come down from the sky? Cow, Tiny Hoka Hoka. It's too cold and damp down there. I don't want to get my feet wet. Now even the cicadas stop singing as the whole forest holds its breath. It's so quiet you can hear a prong of frond unfurl. Pippi Fararoa, will you come down from the sky? Don't do it, Pippi Fararoa. Look like... Look at this beautiful sunlight up there. How could you even think of giving this up? I agree with Tui. Besides, your family is here. Don't leave us. You belong here in the sky. You're a bird after all. You have wings for a reason. What do you think, Kiwi? I don't want to leave this place, and I'm halfway through building my nest. I've been working on it for ages. Still, one of us has to do something. It's your decision, my friend, but if someone doesn't go down there to live, there won't be anywhere for us to build our nest. Oh, uh, cow! Tana hooka hooka, I'm really busy at the moment building my nest. Things to do, you know, sex to collect and... The silence is now deafening. Eh, uh, Kiwi, will you agree to live on the forest floor? Kiwi stretches out her long wings and nervously ruffles her bright coloured feathers. Her feathers may be quivering, but Kiwi's voice is strong. I 
time I hook Orca. I will come down from the sky and live on the forest floor. No, Kiwi, you don't know what you're doing. You're making a big mistake. Your beautiful plumage will be ruined. Kiwi, if you have to rip logs apart for food, think of what you may well end up looking like. And you've got such a beautiful thing legs now. And your brightly coloured feathers will need to turn a muddy brown so you can blend in with the trees. And worst of all, you could lose your wings. You might not be able to fly anymore. Well, someone has to do something. None of you will. I can't stand by and watch this plague of insects destroy our beautiful trees. Besides, a never-ending supply of insects can't be too bad. Kiwi, you mustn't go down into that scary dark place. It will be so frightening. I can't bear to even imagine it. And think about all the stinky mud between your toes, Kiwi. Please reconsider... Where will you build your nest? In the earth? Oh, please reconsider your offer, Kiwi. Yeah, Kiwi, do you need to reconsider? Are you still willing to help? If it will save the trees, I'm willing to come down and live on the forest floor, Tane Hokuhoka. Tane Hokuhoka then turns to look at Kiwi's friends. You should all be grateful to Kiwi. Tui, because you are too afraid to come and live on the dark forest floor, you will wear two white feathers at your throat, the sign of coward. I'm sorry, Tanya Hoka Hoka, but I just can't face life on the ground. Who knows what kind of creepy crawlies lurk down there? Pukiko, because you abhor the idea of getting your feet wet, you will always live in the swamp. The swamp. My feet will always smell of mud. What a an abysmal life. Oh no, what is to become of me? Pippi Fararoa, because you believe your life is too hectic, you will never build another nest again. You will have to lay your eggs in another bird's nest. Other birds' nests? But I will never have my own home ever again. Tony Hooker raises his arms in thanks to Kiwi. Kiwi, because of your great sacrifice, you are going to become the best known and most loved bird of all. In times, Kiwi loses her wings and her beautiful feathers. My legs were once long and slender, but now they, they are thick and strong. Now... I spend my nights foraging for insects on the forest floor. Thanks to Kiwi, Tani Mahuta's forest children survived. And all of the birds of Aotearoa are still able to live in the treetops. Well, most of us. Illustrations done by Title page by Justin Characters by Kevin Page 3 by Maya Page 4 and 5 by Gemma Page 6 and 7 by Lucy Page 8 by Roman And Justin Music by Kevin <laughs>